Hey guys, welcome to the Summit Heights Fellowship broadcast. My name is Edward Crouch and I'm the lead pastor here at Summit Heights. And before we get to our broadcast, I just wanted to say thank you for joining us. If you have a few minutes today, check out our website, summitheightsfellowship.com. And you'll learn all about our church. We have a great student ministry, incredible children's ministry, preschool ministry. And we do small groups all over our community from Mineola to Quitman to Winsboro, Hawkins, even in Big Sandy. We would love to have you check us out one Sunday. If there's anything we could ever do for you, please take a few minutes, go to our website, fill out that prayer card on our website, and we would love to pray for you, reach out to you, or minister to you in any way we can. Again, thanks for joining us today. We hope you enjoy the broadcast. If there's any decisions or questions you have at the end of our broadcast, please reach out to us at our number on the screen or on our website. We would love to visit with you. Have a great day. Enjoy the broadcast. make you move. I don't know what will. I, I mean, I'm looking at some of y'all, y'all like, I just, I kind of want to move on that. Is school out? Everybody's out of school. Is that right? Amen or oh me? Yeah. Hey, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Our kids are here this morning. They, they got out of school like a week ago. We dropped them off at my parents and we've not seen them until yesterday. And, and here's the crazy thing. They're leaving again today. Uh, they, they, they like leave for the whole summer and it's just crazy. We love it and they get to have fun. And I know uh, summer always brings a lot of uh, good times. In fact, we're starting a new series this morning called Holiday Road, Vacation. How many of you guys saw the old Chevy Chase movie, National Lampoon's Vacation? Come on, bunch of sinners, bunch of sinners. Yeah, I, it's one of my favorite. I know, it's one of my favorite. I, and you're ever thinking, man, no preacher should be able to watch it. I love that show because Clark Griswold wants to take his family on this epic road trip. And of course, Alan wants to fly. And he's like, no, I want my family from Chicago to Wally World, right? And y'all remember this old car? I, I love this. Y'all remember that? Anybody? How many? How many of you want one of those? Come on, be honest. Yeah, a few of you. Yeah, no. Uh, I remember as I was looking at some old pictures this last week, thinking about vacation, a buddy of mine, his parents had a station wagon. And y'all remember the rumble seats that faced backwards? Y'all remember those? We rode all the way from here to West Texas in the back seat, facing backwards, looking at the West Texas, at East Texas. I'm telling you, if I did that today, it would be messy because car sickness, the whole nine yards, could not do it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, it's funny, this summer, many of you are gonna take a vacation. And we, we encourage that. In fact, we're going to take a vacation, my family and I, and we can't wait. We love to go to the beach. We love to hang out. And, and, and I'll say this to you, because I know some of you, you don't get to do big, epic vacations. But I would encourage you, take some time. We have a great park down the road. If you can't afford the big, epic vacation, go down the road and enjoy a day at Tyler State Park. It costs three bucks to get into Lake Hawkins, over at their beach. Go hang out. Because I think there's something about vacation, and, and I believe there's a time of refreshing, and I, and I really believe. God created us and he created in us that there is a rhythm of vacation. It's what scripture calls Sabbath. And next week, we're going to look at Sabbath. We're going to talk about and kind of dig into that. And, and, and we're, going to, we're going to kind of unpack that over this next few weeks of what it looks like to vacation. You know, we have three kids. And, and if you don't know, our kids are anywhere from nine years old to fixing to have a 12-year-old and, and got a 13-year-old. And, and I love my kids. And I remember when Danielle and I first started having babies, we, we, we really thought vacation would be fun with kids. You remember that day? And, and then that first vacation you go on with kids. And in theory, it sounded fun. And then, but yet, as it got going, it was kind of like a three-ring circus. Amen? I mean, I love my kids. I really do. But, you know, on vacation, their attention spans are about the length of a goldfish, you know, and it's not very long. And, and, and it seems like they can be annoying at times. And listen, full disclosure, they learn it from me because I can be annoying too, amen. Uh, they, it doesn't fall far from, hey, 
My wife just said amen, now we're done. Uh, they get tired and, and you know, it seems like they have to eat all the time. I mean, you go and you take them out to eat, you leave the restaurant island, you come right back out, they're like, I'm hungry. And you're like, we just, you know, and, and, and here's the crazy thing, their bladders are about the size of a mustard seed, amen? Has nothing to do with prayer and faith, okay? The, you know, and all that stuff. And by the time you arrive with kids on that very first vacation with your kids, you're just worn slap out. And that's not the point of vacation, is it? A vacation is supposed to be restful. And, and what is it? You know, it's just weird about vacations. Danielle and I, we've been blessed to go on some great vacations. And listen, I'm not bragging this morning. Uh, I'm bragging on God because I'm telling you, over the last couple of years, we've got to do some epic vacations because of family members that say, hey, we'll pay this. And if you, all you have to do is pay that. We've even had some folks in this church send us to Hawaii and send us to Israel. And it's been, it's been kind of crazy. And I look back on that and go, wow, we would be vacationing in Winona if it wasn't for those people. Amen. Uh, you know, that's about what we could have afforded. And, 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 with our kids, our kids have seen so much. And for those of you guys that have chil that don't have children, your kids are grown up and maybe you hadn't started your family yet and you're listening to me talk about how much I love my kids and, and yet at the same time, how much they drive me crazy. It never fails when I do this. There's some sweet lady that'll come up to me after the service and gonna listen, honey, you better love those kids. They're not gonna be around forever. They're gonna move out someday. I'm like, that's the point, <laughs> amen? I don't, I, listen, I love my babies but I don't want them living in my house when they're 35. Amen. Amen. Okay, there's something sick about that, okay? I'm just gonna say that. Kids don't get the idea of vacation, do they? Rest, relax. I don't know what it is, but when Danielle and I have taken these vacations, we take our kids to big cities. And you know, when you live in Hawkins, America, you know, the, the biggest thing you avoid is pigs and deer and maybe a golf cart here and there. But when you go to big cities, there's, there's traffic and there's people and there's homeless and there's crackheads and there's all these things going on and, and you're walking around with your kids. I used to laugh at people that put their kids on leashes. Y'all remember those? And, and if you have one, you need counseling. But anyway, I get it now because you go to a big city and you're walking around with your kids. It kind of gets scary. You're yanking kids away from the sidewalk and you go past the homeless guy that's talking to somebody and, and they're ranting and raving. You're like, stay close, kids, stay close, kids. You know, it's just kind of crazy. I remember a couple of years ago, we were on our way to, to, to Florida to stay in our buddy's condo. And, and on the way, we decided we'd stop in New Orleans. So it was a great idea. We love jazz music. We love those kind of things. And it was a Saturday morning. Danielle was sleeping in and the kids and I, we were up and I said, you know what? I think we're gonna go downtown. We're gonna go down on the quarter and it's 10 o'clock on, on Saturday morning. Surely it's safe to go down Bourbon Street. And so uh, we get in the car and we drive down there. And you know, if you've ever been down there, as soon as you turn on the Bourbon Street, just like half of America is trying to get on it. What I didn't know that day is there was a thing called the Red Dress Run going on. Now, if you'll look at that picture, it's the largest fundraiser that happens in the state of Louisiana for nonprofits. They do this every year. We happen to be there on that weekend, 10 o'clock Saturday morning. Notice the men are in dresses. So we pull on the Bourbon Street and I'm committed at this point. And I, and I hear my kids, they're sitting three rows back, my girls, and they're on the back row of, the, of our expedition. And, and I hear them back there going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And I'm like, what, what, what? And I, I'm like, nothing, nothing, dad, nothing. Oh no, oh no, we gonna talk about whatever you are talking about. And they're like, dad, dad, that guy's wearing a tutu. Did you see that? And I'm like, oh. And she goes, I saw it. And I went, what? He didn't have anything on under it. And I was like, oh no. Parenting fail. We've made some bad decisions on, on, on vacations. And what is it about hotels? I mean, really, when you take your kids to a hotel, they turn into schizophrenic squirrels, I mean. I mean, they're just, it's like an explosion happens in the room and things go everywhere. Maybe it's the air, maybe it's the neatness of it all. I don't know. Danielle and I have stayed in some really bad places. We've stayed in some nice places. We stayed in this place in uh, Lakeview, Nevada. Is that what it's called, Lakeview, Nevada? Has no lake, we didn't know that. Um, <laughs> Not sure there is a lake in Nevada, but anyway, um, we we pulled up to this place and it was a dump. I mean, I, I mean, it was a dump. But I mean, we had to stay somewhere. And Yelp, the pictures on Yelp weren't the pictures we were looking at. And so we go in. We're like, kids, do not go out the door. Do not once you're in, lock the doors. And uh, we we go to sleep that night. I mean, it's terrible. We wake up the next morning. You know how you have those inner lining of curtains, you know, that make it dark in the room. We look up and it looks like a star field. 
because the moth has eaten out everything. And so there's this beautiful constellation of the sh sun shining through. And we're like, holy cow, so I, like, I got to take a shower. I didn't take a shower all day yesterday. So I go in and I get in the shower. I'm all lathered up. I know that's a terrible mental, mental picture, but I, I'm in the shower and the water's running. And, and just about the time I get soaked, the water starts just slowly going down. And finally, I'm, I'm all lathered up and I'm looking at it and there's no water. It just went off. I thought, well, maybe I'll just rinse off in the sink, right? I mean, fat man in a sink. Anyway, you know, I, I kind of get out. There's no water. I guess at nine o'clock in Lakeview, Nevada, they cut the water off, you know? And I'm like, dude, we got to get out of here. I mean, it's just crazy. The one year we decided to do a road trip, we were going to go to Oregon via Los Angeles. And so we, crazy, we have a sister-in-law, I have a sister-in-law that lives in the San Bernardino Mountains. And so we went to Rio Dosa, New Mexico. We spent the night in this beautiful place. And for some reason that day, we decided we were going to go from Rio Dosa to Los Angeles. And it uh, sounded like a great idea, but it turned into a 16 hour day and we were running down Interstate 10 across Arizona. How many of you got been on that road? Interstate 10 across. If hell has a road to it, I think that's it. You know what I'm saying? That was miserable, man. I think we nearly died like 20 times. It's just crazy. But you know, here's the thing about vacation. Vacations are fun, but they're nearly impossible, aren't they? I mean, think about this, holidays, vacations, you're gonna put extended family and your family all in one car or one place and hope they all get along. And, and hopefully they will. And inevitably what happens is, is you do create some incredible memories. I could tell you stories after stories after stories this morning on some of the places we've been and what we've got to experience. And yet God, I think, created something in us. Now, let me tell you what we're going to do today. Today, I want to introduce a series. And if you come this morning, you got your journal out, you're waiting for me to uh, exegete a passage and, and do all of that this morning. I just want to just relax, okay? Come back next week because we're going to dive in. I just want to introduce this morning. And then next week, we're going to look at, I've already told you, we're going to look at the doctrine of vacation. Did you know there is a doctrine of vacation? It's what God created in us that in our rhythm of life that we are to practice Sabbath. On Father's Day, Jake's going to be looking at being asleep at the wheel, where are you leading your family? Because you are leading your family somewhere. And you may be asleep at the wheel and may just be going along for the ride, but we're going to be talking about what it means to be asleep at the wheel and leading your family. Then we're going to look at a packing list. Because when you go on vacation, you got to pack, right? Our girls are 18 months apart. And the first time we went on a trip with them, we thought we were going to rent a U-Haul trailer just to get everything. You got to take out the whole house when you travel with babies. And, 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 you know, and we all pack stuff in our lives. And so what do you do with that? And what are those things we need to get rid of? We're going to look at expectations because we all have them. How do we manage those? What do we do with those? And then lastly, we're going to be looking at prayer because I really believe that in vacation, in Sabbath, the whole point is staying connected to the Father. Staying connected to the Father. Now, here's what we want you to do this morning. How many of you guys saw the beach scene out front? Most everybody see that? We've set that up for a reason because what we want you to do is today, we want you, your whole family to get in that and take a picture. You can actually get in and play in the sand, okay? So some of you guys that got in trouble by your wife and your wife told you you, couldn't, you can go play in the sand, okay? We want you to do that and we want you to take the picture of your family, get somebody to take a picture and we want you to put it on social media and invite people and hashtag SHF Vacation or SHF Holiday Road and what we want to do is we want to see your vacation this summer. Any Anywhere you go, if it's to the beach, hashtag SHF Vacation, SHF Holiday Road. Make it appropriate because I know some of you and you're going to send a picture that, anyway. Um, so make it appropriate, amen? And if you don't know what a hashtag is, ask somebody under 40 or ask one of your kids, amen? And they'll explain everything for that, okay? So here's what I want to do today. I want to pose this question, just an introduction. And here's the question I want to ask you this morning. Go ahead, guys. What if we came? to believe that vacation was intended to be a part of a healthy pattern of life? What if that became a reality? You see, I think for some of us in the Christianity, some of us don't know that we can actually enjoy Jesus, that we, can't, that we can actually enjoy walking with God. I've met some people along in my journey and some of them have gone here and they don't anymore. And, and, and they believe that all the time you should walk around just beating yourself up, that you can never enjoy anything you can never enjoy what God's created. It wasn't until I, just right after I got out of college, I read John Popper's book, Desiring God. 
meditations from a Christian hedonist that Piper began to challenge his readers that you can actually enjoy the Father. In fact, that's the point of Christianity is to enjoy God. That somewhere along the journey that we can enjoy him. And this whole idea, this pattern of vacationing is not easily maintained in our culture. Think about it, we're always connected. We're always connected. In today's technology, I think some of us realize that we should vacation, we should take some time off, we should have a pattern, but we don't because we feel guilty if we do. And then for some of us that do, we just don't integrate it regularly enough in our journey. As we look back in the beginning of creation, after God had created the earth and the moon and the stars and all that we get to enjoy today, on the seventh day, he did something incredible. In fact, theologians kind of struggle with this, and honestly, I do too, but he rested. How does an all-powerful God, all-knowing God, why does he need the rest? I mean, I don't know that I fully understand that. We're gonna look at it more next week when it comes to Sabbath. It seems likely, how does God get tired, right? Why did he rest? We'll talk about that next week. You see, few of us realize that God actually intended for vacation and rest to be a part. And the reason we don't really get that is in our culture today is we've come to the place where we're always connected. And I gotta be honest with you, I have a love-hate relationship with technology. I love it on one hand, I hate it on the other. I mean, we're always connected. And and, and even though I'm not very tech savvy anymore, I I used to be a sucker for a new gadget. Now I have to go to David and say, David, can you figure this out? Or I have to go to a younger staff member and go, I don't know what that, or I go to my nine-year-old and he fixes it, you know? And it's just, I don't understand that. But there was a day where I loved it because I love being organized. I love having access to my calendar. I love now that we have the internet and we can go anywhere we want to and we always be connected. And technology is supposed to help us be more productive. I'm not sure it does. That's kind of debated, but it should help us be productive. But what happens is, is that technology is not going anywhere. It's just gonna continue to be around. And for some of you tech junkies, if you're like me, our whole family's an Apple family, tablets, phones, laptops, everything. And so we, we stay all in the family And because if you love Jesus, you, you have a Mac. But anyway, um, that's not theologically correct. But anyway, uh, we love that. But do you know there are 1.5 million apps on the App Store just for Apple? And you can spend all day long just being connected. <laughs> I was at a meeting recently and it was with a bunch of pastors sitting around a table and we all had our laptops and we were getting ready to sit down at the meeting and, and this is several years ago. And, and before we ever got started, one of the pastors said, hey man, hey man, hey, what's the, what's the, what's the Wi-Fi password? Hey, yeah, yeah, I need that password. Hey, hey, what's the Wi-Fi password? It's like they couldn't sit there for an hour and a half and be disconnected. And you know what I'm saying? And what was weird about it is I was sitting in that meeting and there's live people, okay, at the table. And, and I have my Mac up and I have two couple of windows open on my Mac and my Mac connects to my phone. And so I can text message from my Mac and nobody had to know that I picked my phone up. And, and what I found myself is in a meeting with live people where I could actually have a conversation. I was, I was returning emails and I was, I was looking up stuff that they were saying. I was texting two people and one guy was in the room that I was texting. <laughs> Amen. You know why you do that? So you can talk about everybody else around the table and they won't know, right? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Sick, isn't it? See, you, you understand my dysfunction because you have it, right? Come on, <laughs> uncomfortable laugh, uncomfortable laugh. See, technology is dominating the world. And the question comes down is, is, how do we leverage that so it doesn't create dysfunction in our life and in our family? Uh, a couple of years ago, when I came back from sabbatical, I was over visiting with a friend of mine and we were talking about, he said, you took three months off? I said, yeah. He said, you didn't return email? No. You weren't on light, no. And he looked at me and he's 52 years old and his kids were out of the house at this point. And this guy had made hundreds of thousands of dollars, probably millions of dollars. And I was looking at him and he looked at me and he says, you know, I gotta be honest with you. If I have one regret of all the money I've made and all the stuff that I have and everything that I've got to experience, I never went on vacation without my laptop And I never went on vacation. When I was at vacation, I would get up in the morning and I would say goodbye to my wife and kids and they would go play and I would work all day. He said, I wish I could do what you did. I wish I could take time. And if I could go back, I'm telling you right now, I would go back and I would not work on my vacations. See, there's something in all of us that we were intended to enjoy rest. Constant connection creates an internal as well as an external noise. It's no wonder we struggle with spiritual practices just like Sabbath or prayer 
or meditation or solitude. I mean, even if we turn off the gadgets, it's like we can't turn off the noise, can we? We're restless, we're fidgety. I remember when I shut down Facebook a few years ago and I got set free and, and I'm no longer on it, amen. And I remember that first week, two weeks, I, I mean, I would sit around, I didn't know what to do with my hands, man. I was just, a, I, I couldn't, because I, I was addicted to it. And, and over about a month's period, it's all of a sudden I'm like, wow, I don't have to be connected. We don't like silence, do we? In fact, I'm not real good with silence. I'm better than I used to be. It's about four years ago, if you walked into my office at home or here, there'd be a radio on, there'd be a TV on. In fact, I would sit at the house and Danielle would go through and go, are you watching that? No, I just wanna hear it. Because I wasn't comfortable with silence. And I know some of you are not, and you're the same way. And even when you're silent, it's less like, I mean, you ever tried to sit quiet for five minutes? And as some of you are good. My wife can sit in the house all day long and not have one sound. I think it's sick, but anyway, she's good. You ever try to sit silent for five minutes? Listen, can we try that this morning? I tell you what, guys, turn off the Wi-Fi, okay? Just go ahead and turn every Wi-Fi off. We're gonna be quiet for about five minutes. I'm just kidding, we're not. Um, <laughs> some of you, when I said turn off the Wi-Fi, you were like, oh my gosh, no! <laughs> Gotta be connected, don't we? See, it's not an easy assignment. It's not an easy assignment because your mind never shuts down. You remember when silence used to be the norm and racket drove you crazy? See, we flip that now. Because we're so connected, we've got to have noise all the time. And technology generates that white noise. It's no wonder we have a hard time focusing on people. You can't stay engaged in a conversation if you're constantly checking your apps. Nothing drives me crazier when I'm in a meeting and somebody picks their phone up and we're in the middle of a conversation and they start reading a text. I'm like, hello? Pulled up to a drive-thru the other day and there was a sign on the window. If you're on the phone, we will not take your order. I thought, yeah, finally. Drives me crazy, doesn't it? And yet I'm guilty. That's the crazy thing. I find myself doing it. It's almost like we have this social media ADD where we're looking past people. And listen, it's all a great tool and it's all great around for monitoring Twitter and texting and Facebook and all that. But listen to me, it's, it's cheapening relationships because you're looking past people. You're not able to hold that person's hand. You're not able to reach out and touch them. You're not able to, to hold them. You're not able to be present with them. See, the ministry of presence is not fully possible in a virtual world. And yet many of us have exchanged that and we're calling that relationship. It's not relationship at all. Because we're always having to check it. We're always having to be there. Listen, can I tell you this summer, the most powerful gift you can give your friends is the, is the power of presence. Listen to me, dads. Several years ago, Danielle and I were in counseling. We've been in counseling almost our whole marriage, amen? And I think all of you should be too, okay? I, I just, I, counseling's healthy, all right? So we were in counseling and, and we went over to this counselor and we were kind of struggling communicating and finally Gene looked at me and he said, Edward, you know what your problem is? You're home, but you're not engaged. I'm like, I'm home! But I wasn't paying any attention. The greatest gift some of you can give your wife or your husbands is simply to be home and to be present. Set the phone down. Actually set it down. Unplug, literally and figuratively. Consider giving your phone a Sabbath. Uh-oh. What would it look like for you to have that conversation with your spouse or your friend? And go, man, how's this getting in the way of my relationships? And then to lay that down for 24 hours. I got a good friend of mine that owns his own business and he'll tell his employees every once in a while, I'm going dark, I'm going dark. And he disconnects from everything for 24 hours just so he can be with his family. Just lays it down. Is that they literally are unplugging and they are engaging. See, it's one thing to unplug. It's another thing to engage, to listen, to make eye contact, to not look past them. Because that's what we're doing the whole time that we're always connected, being fully present, not in a hurry to treat each other like you wanna be treated. That means you aren't constantly glancing at your phone, just checking the time. No, we're not. Because there's something about that that we always have to be connected. 
And I'm convinced that if Jesus walked through the earth today, he would leverage technology. But let me tell you what he would do. He would manage it so well while building up the kingdom, he wouldn't allow it to destroy his soul. And for many of us in this room, we are so connected and we never disconnect that it's destroying our souls. It's destroying relationships. And I'm convinced that he would use it, but he would demonstrate to us how to be healthy. In fact, he already did. There's a great story in Mark chapter four, verses 35 to 40. It's a great passage because Jesus is doing healing and he's serving and he's feeding and they've been working all day long and they come to the end of the day. And we pick up in verse 35 of Mark chapter four, look at it. It says, that day when evening came, he said to his disciples, let's go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were other boats with him and a furious squall came up. You ever happened in your life that a furious squall comes up in your life, that a storm comes up, it's unexpected? So the squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped and Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. What a great scene. The disciples woke him up and said to him, teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, said to the waves, quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. And he said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Listen, they've been healing people all day long. They've been feeding people. And it came to a point where Jesus said, that's enough. Guys, we got to rest. Let's get in the boat. Let's go across. And people always followed Jesus. Didn't matter where he went. But Jesus was showing these guys, listen, guys, I know that you've got stuff to do. I know you've got things going on. I know there's more important things we can do. There's always these things that need to, need to happen. But listen, guys, at some point, we've got to stop. We've got to stop to rest with all the important things that Jesus could have kept doing. He said, guys, let's get in the boat and go to the other side. So let me give you two things as we begin this series and we're gonna go home. And here's the first thing I'd just like to say to you this summer as you vacation, taking what Jesus said, because one of the reasons that Jesus rested and one of the reasons Jesus pulled it back is he always wanted to stay connected to the Father. And there's something in us that, that we, in our resting, in our vacating, in our, in our Sabbath, the reason God wanted us to do that is so that we would stay connected to him through prayer and scripture that we would allow that to feed our soul. In Matthew chapter 14, John the Baptist had just been beheaded and that was one of Jesus' closest compadres. And, and when Jesus heard about John the Baptist, he withdrew from the people to grieve. He withdrew from the people to grieve and he withdrew to spend time with the Father. He withdrew because he was hurting and he knew he needed to spend time with the Father. Well, in this story, just like in the last story, all the crowds found Jesus because people were always wanting something from Jesus. They were always wanting to perform. And Jesus had compassion on them. He began to heal them. And then again, he pulled away because he knew there was something that he needed to be refreshed. And so this summer, here's what I would say to you is spend some time with the Father, maybe every day that you would just take a Sabbath and spend time in his word and spend some time just communing with him and listening to him. You know, one thing I noticed about Jesus is Jesus didn't rush around trying to fix everybody. Now, let me say that again, because I think you might've missed that. One of the things I loved about Jesus, I've been reading the New Testament through, I'm trying to do that once a month, just read the entire New Testament. And one of the things I've noticed in the gospel is Jesus didn't try to fix everybody. He actually rested. He actually pulled away. He actually spent time with the Father. See, some of you in this room think you've got to fix everybody. I've been there. There's a difference between being, being responsible for versus responsible to. See, I used to believe I was responsible for everybody. And so I never shut down. I worked seven days a week. I worked all the time. And I ended up neglecting the very thing God gave me that's my first ministry, and that's my family. And you see, Jesus taught us that. He didn't run around all the time trying to fix everybody. Instead, he taught us a rhythm of doing ministry and spending time with the Father. You see, I shared with you last week the beauty of the gospel. The beauty of the gospel the good news is that you and I are sinners, 
No one in this room is not a sinner. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. If you were here last week, we learned that because sin entered the world, that's why God sent Jesus to die on the cross for us. Because there was no way we could be saved and made right with God. And God demonstrated his love to us that while we were still sinners, we were enemies of God, Christ died for us. Why? So that you and I, through a relationship with Jesus, could be made right with God. And you know what Jesus said about him? He said, hey, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. See, rest starts in a relationship with Jesus. Let me say that again. Rest starts in a relationship with Jesus. And listen, if you've never surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, if you don't know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I know that I know that I know that I know that if I died tonight, I'm gonna spend an eternity with Jesus. If you can't say that, then I would call you today to say, rest comes by you admitting you're a sinner, confessing your sins, and inviting Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life. And you can do that today. Because real rest is found in Jesus. Real rest. It's not found in what you do. I'm telling you, some of us are human doings, not human beings. We spend more time doing than we do being. And one of the things Jesus taught us over and over again is he withdrew to spend time with the, with the Father. But here's the second thing. As you make time to spend time with the Father through prayer and scripture, add in some time. As you vacation to connect with others, you have to be intentional. You know, throughout the Gospels, Jesus, it's amazing. He always spent time with his disciples. And, and yeah, they were doing ministry. And, and we have those stories. But here's the stories we don't have in the Gospels. We don't have those stories of when they were walking along the road. Wouldn't you have loved to know exactly what they were talking about when they were moving from this city to that city? I, I, I just sometimes I'll sit in my office and I'll think about that when I'm reading. Because I know when I get together with a bunch of my buddies, We'll be talking for a little bit, Tim, and all of a sudden we'll just burst into laughter. Was there those moments where Jesus was walking with the disciples and somebody said something or somebody did something and and everybody just cracked up. Everybody just broke into laughter. I used to have this picture of Jesus, uh, a pastor that I served with got really burned out in ministry and it was this picture, it was a limited edition print signed and it was a picture of Jesus with his head kicked back and he was cracking up and his mouth was open and laughing. And my, my pastor got mad at the church and mad at God and he threw it in a dumpster and I crawled in the dumpster and pulled it out. I went and put new glass in it and I had it in my office. And I used to sit and look at that picture and I would see Jesus, his head kicked back and that hair flowing and, and he was cracking up. And I just, I used to think sometimes, man, I would love to hear his laugh. I ended up getting to give that picture back to my friend as he was restored years later. And they called me and see if we could give it back to him. I couldn't wait to take it back, but I missed that picture because it gave me this picture of Jesus that he enjoyed people and people enjoyed him. He used to go visit his family, his mothers and his brother, his mothers, mother and brothers. He would hang out with them. He hung out with his great friend, Lazarus and Lazarus' sisters, Mary and Martha. Of course, he had to raise Lazarus from the dead to hang out with him, amen? (laughs) Jesus connected with people. He was a man that not only stood the importance of time with those he loved, he modeled it. He showed us how important it was. In fact, it was him who said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and spirit, and love your neighbors yourself. Now get this, if you don't do anything else this summer in your vacation, spend time with the Father, love him, but then make an appoint, an intention to spend time with others, and it starts in your family. It starts in your family, and to spend time and hang out with them. And listen, I I just, I need to say this, because I know some of you are struggling. Because my friend who I told you about, that was 52, he worked for a, a Fortune 500 company. And I know some of you, you can't disconnect. So let me, let me say this to you. I've got a real good friend of mine I talked to a couple of years ago. He took his very first sabbatical, pastors a large church over east of here. And we were driving down the road. And I was, in fact, we were on vacation when he and I were talking. And, and I said, hey, dude, tell, tell me what you're doing every day. Tell me what's going on. He said, well, I get up every morning and I cook my family breakfast and I grab my laptop, I grab my Bible and I go out and I spend eight hours in study. I was like, why? He goes, because I got to bring some word back to the church because they gave me, they've given me this eight week sabbatical. I said, who told you that? I said, did they tell you to do that? No. I said, what are you doing that for? He goes, I don't know. I got to bring a word back. I said, no, you don't. 
The whole point of rest is to spend time with the Father and those you love. And here's what I told you, I'll never forget this on the phone. I said, listen, bro, here's all you owe that church. Here's all you owe them is put that down. Go in, make love to your wife, go spend time with your kids and spend all day long enjoying them. And that's all you owe that church is to go back and be refreshed. <laughs> He's like, okay, it's your pastor. See, we've got this idea that we've ought to be doing. Doing, doing, doing. And at some point, now some of you need to do something, okay? I'm just telling you. The most godly thing some of you do, you could do is sleep late on Sunday morning and you have my permission to do so. But if you've been sleeping late for six months and this is your first Sunday here, let's have another conversation, okay? Some of you need to learn to be. And the way you learn to be a human being is spend time with the Father and spend time with those you love and rest. We're gonna talk about that next week as we continue this series, amen? Let's pray together. Well, Father, I love you. And I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for his example as our Savior. That God, he modeled for us that he was fully man and fully God. And he modeled for us what it meant to spend time with you, to love others. And God, I pray you'd give us courage this summer. For some of us, we've not spent time with God in months, years. That God, we would just pick your word up and take some time every day to spend that moment with you. Maybe it's in silence. Maybe it's reading a few passages and just hanging out with you daily. And God, I pray this summer as we go about all the activities that go on from sporting events to vacations to all those things, that God, you would give us the courage to be present, that we would unplug, take that time to be disconnected. And God, I know there's some guys in this room that their jobs won't let them. So God, give them wisdom. Give these ladies wisdom for those companies that don't get this to be wise in how they return email and make phone calls. That God, they can spend time with you and their family during this season. And God, I pray, if there's somebody here this morning that's never found their rest in you, they've never given their life to you, that God, that right now in this moment, that they would confess they're a sinner and they would invite you to be the Lord of their life right now where they sit. So Lord, I love you. Thank you that we can have fun this summer. We can have fun in church. We can enjoy you. And God, I pray you would change us. I love you. Thank you for Jesus. And we ask everything in his name and everybody said. I mean, now look at me, look at me. Here's what I want you to do, okay? Uh, these beach balls, okay? You, you do not have to double tithe, all right? Okay, I promise, all right? But I know some of you, you're visiting Summit and you've never been a part of a church that actually has fun, okay? So I want you to come back and here's what I want you to do, okay? Yeah, you can hit them around, it's okay. Some of you are like, oh, I don't know what to do, okay? So here's what I want you to do. I want you to go out here, get on the beach scene, get your family in that beach scene. You can get in and get somebody to take your picture, put it on your social media, SHF Vacation, SHF Holiday Road, tag us in that. We're gonna be rolling some pictures. If you go on vacation, tag on your social media, invite somebody to come back with you next week. We're using the movie Vacation starting next week to illustrate every sermon we do so you don't want to miss it. I love you. Have a great week, and I'll see you soon. Hey, guys, welcome back. We hope you enjoyed the broadcast today, and if there's any decision you felt like God is leading you to make today, we would encourage you to uh, make that decision and to go online. There's a prayer tab on our website that you can go to. We'd love to pray for you. We would also love for you, if you accepted Christ today, to send us a text. We have a number at the bottom of the screen that you can text us the word accept if you accepted Christ. Or if you would like to know more about baptism, just shoot us a text with the word baptize to that number on the screen and we'll get to you, I promise you. Hey, have a great day. And listen, if you're looking for a great church and you don't have a church home, come visit us one Sunday. We have two services, one nine, one at 11. We'd love to see you. Have a great week.